Welcome to the mansion at Strathmore. We're here to celebrate our season opening exhibitions, Paperworks, The Art of Paper, Wool Gathering with artist Sheena Comstam, and Modulation and Harmony, Art from Emin Sir Kitkison. I'm Leslie Lundgren, Curator of Paperworks and Director of Exhibitions for the mansion at Strathmore. Paper is one of those materials that has been part of our households, classrooms, and offices for so long, we forget its versatility and strengths. It fundamentally shaped the way we record events and share stories. Artists from our community in the DMV are joined by artists from New York, Bel Air, Baltimore, Virginia, Florida, and Texas, constructing pieces that are playful and poignant. The paper in this exhibition includes paper so thin it's sheer, cardstock and cardboard, wallpaper, magazine and book pages, sandpaper, and high quality artist papers. Ashley Chang's work has a historic background. Quilling may have started in Egypt or Europe, and it has seen a resurgence in recent decades. But Ashley takes the art in modern directions. She creates by sculpting spirals, loops, and coils into designs and lettering with both joyful color combinations and modern muted palettes. Typically, quillers will take strips of paper, different colors, and they will coil them into spirals and use those spirals and maybe some straighter shapes, some straighter lines to create different designs. This is a very traditional piece. This is a kaleidoscope by Ashley. And you can see that these coils and rings form a larger shape. And then she's used straighter lines to create little tips to her kaleidoscope edges. Ashley is working in muted tones. She's got a color palette of white and cream, and she places those whites on top of one another. And then interspersed in this design are a few colors that are in a pastel palette. You can appreciate this work because it's on a grid. Everything is very regimented and structured. And then you have these little bursts of colors. Um, it's a very playful installation and it allows you to see the complexity of, of the use of paper here. Paper cutting is a process of removing paper to leave an image in the remaining surface. The artists in Paperworks excel in their individual practice and approach. Paper cutting artists offer both representational and abstract work. Lee Sugg's work is a study in geometry and alignment. Suggs investigates cubes, triangles, curves, and edges in creating undulating or grid-like patterns. And Lee's piece is hand cut in this design that kind of resembles a figure eight. And each cut has to be exact so that the viewer can see the shape in its geometrical form along a grid line. And that shape also undulates in these curves. So there's a lot of math to this to get each square to move in precisely to form this wonderful organic curve. Also, she is a master of color theory. She's got this vibrant indigo that just moves off the paper underneath and kind of vibrates here. And behind it is, is a perfect apricot tone. And both colors work so well together because they share the same intensity.
Lucrezia Beeler's depictions of people and wildlife are created with small scissors, forming a tender balance between subject and habitat. She cuts lines that are no thicker than a thread, allowing her to create small details that build pictures within pictures. The final piece is glued onto white paper only in selected places, and this adds depth because the unglued parts are not flush with the mat board. Jennifer Depp Parker builds thin stripes and shards of color paper to assemble the enlarged pupil and iris of astronaut Neil Armstrong. Parker assembles the composition first in her study on the opposite wall, focusing on where to create the highlight colors and the deeper tones. Her finished piece is an achievement in composition and technique. Rosa Leff's sharp renderings of city life are inspired by Philadelphia, Baltimore, and world destinations captured during her travels. Leff is a master of perspective with a technique that demands both excellence in composition and exactitude in producing positive and negative space. So I start from my original photographs and I take them, you know, when I'm on vacation, when I'm walking around my neighborhood, some of them are taken when I'm walking my dogs and I print them out and I literally tape them onto the art paper. So like in the case of a uh, bazaar that's behind me, that's taped onto that burgundy paper. And then I'm drawing on top of it to make sure that each element of the paper connects. And then I use that exacto knife mostly to cut away the white space, but I also sometimes play with positive and negative. And I think that piece is a really good example of that because it's such a busy scene that you're seeing, you know, people in front of signs, in front of vending stalls, in front of all these different foods, and there's so many textures. So I think for me, it's really about just highlighting that mundane, looking for the things that other people aren't taking pictures of. And I think when you put the time in and the care in to carefully cut these tiny details that most people would walk by without giving a second thought to, you can help people appreciate how beautiful some of these things are. The majority of the work in the show is taken on her travels in China, but this piece is in Washington, D.C. Kate Norris uses imagery from vintage wallpaper and scientific illustrations to rearrange the florals, toile, and figures into what can easily be mistaken as broken ceramic mosaics. We think of wallpaper as decoration for our walls, but here Kate uses the decorative aspects of the wallpaper as material for her collage. And she's tearing this decoration and she's constructing a whole new image. Up close, we can see the figures torn right out of the original design, and superimposed upon each other. We can still see the torn edges. So here we have a figure, we have a butterfly, monkeys, birds. But in her hands, these small individual images come together to form a larger image. And once we step back, we see that those pieces create a butterfly or a moth. In her work, Batgirl, Norris uses toile, which originated in Europe in the mid 18th century and combined complex sceneries of figures at work or at play in the countryside. 
Norris uses the imagery to form the outline of the bat with the torn pieces of figures and botanicals, reassembling them with a humorous wink. Daniel Lay was born in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and now lives in Florida. He reimagines and transforms books by adding clay figures and found objects to faceted and fan-shaped books. In his hands, Daniel creates the exact moment when humans connect with the words of the author and are transformed by the text or transported to another place in time. If you asked a bibliophile what they thought of his work, I don't know that they'd be too pleased, but I think it's amazing. Daniel sent two wall pieces as well as his installation work. These pieces were originally at District Arts in Frederick, Maryland, so we have to thank Bill and Stacy McLaughlin. Daniel's pieces in this show are taken from books, but he's also incorporating some clay figures like this one here. This piece is called Deflated. Much like his work on the staircase, in this piece, She Who Cast Shadows, he's used these fan and facet shapes, but has introduced some colored paper. And they create a little bit of definition and draw our attention to the pages in a different way. And again, sitting in the center of the work, we had the clay figure. Ronnie Joles employs papers uniquely suited to her process. She works with papers from Nepal, Japan, Italy, and Mexico, building layers needed to create distance and foreground. Ronnie Joles uses paper to create texture, and then she paints on top of that. So if we look at this piece called Autumn Sky, what she's done is she's used various types of paper. Some of this paper resembles mulberry paper and other looks like rice paper. And she's created, uh, layered and created with maybe some sort of adhesive on top of it, a surface that looks like it's brush or weeds or various vines on the surface of, of her paper. And then she's come in and she's painted the paper to resemble birch trees and leaves. It's very effective. And in a piece without a frame, it's as if these trees are growing right up your wall. Mary Louise sculpts fine Italian papers into whimsical and delicate flowers in her installation. She uses an assortment of fine quality papers that can be rolled and molded into shape, which personify living botanicals. Mary Louise Roach has exhibited at Strathmore before. She is a pastel painter, but in this exhibition, she's using her knowledge of paper folding to create a garden of botanicals. The wonderful thing about working in a historic home is sometimes you can use the space. These flowers are emerging through windows and it creates a very haunting installation where viewers can walk the space in and out of the window arrangements. Get up close to see the individual folds that create these larger than life flowers. Gina Gwen Palacios carves cardboard into sincere scenes of life from her home state of Texas. This work is deeply personal and profoundly tender. Both the renderings of the artist's father and aunt and the scenes of the fences separating people bonded together from the generations that lived in Texas when it was part of Mexico to those living there today. In order to give the cardboard 
uh, a different color and texture to denote one figure from another. She's used stand oil, which is used in oil painting, and it's created the different colors of hair for the figures. The design on the cardboard actually feels like fabric. She's carved into cardboard the pattern for the fabric of the dress. This wonderful portrait using cotton to give the work some depth in the clothes that the pair are wearing. Cardboard is not only the surface that she's using to carve her figures and paint her landscapes, but it is also the material that generations have used in migrant work to pack vegetables and fruits. Melinda Fabian draws on her background in illustration to create picture book critters that live in her nearly life-size backyard tableau. All the material on exhibition is made from paper. Melinda sculpts, cuts, and paints her work in life-size and miniature formats. When I decided to curate paperworks, I went to Melinda and asked her what it is that she would like to do. Melinda said that she would like the chance to create a piece for the space that would bring the outdoors in. So she created a Victorian backyard garden filled with little creatures and critters, as small as ladybugs to as large as a golden retriever. When I'm developing an idea, I try to think about how I want my visitors to feel when they come to see my art. And I wanted to create a moment in time, create a habitat, a place where people can come and look at my art and feel happy and joyful. And with this piece, I wanted to create the moment in time where maybe you're sitting on your porch and you're noticing, uh, you know, like maybe you have some kittens and they're playing with a ball or a ball of yarn and they're just playing. And it's really such a cute little moment. Just those little tiny moments in life, I think can really bring us joy. And I think it's important that we remember those and. Um, I like to uh, bring nature into my work. I feel that that's very important to have that in our lives and in our habitats. Uh, I've illustrated for many different magazines and publications over the years. I started experimenting with my art and bringing more paper into my illustration work. I wanted to see if I could create illustrations and artwork that are three-dimensional. So start out with flat pictures and then bring in paper, three-dimensional elements. And that's how my paper sculpture all began, was because of that happening. I think it's going to be hard to convince people that everything in this installation is made of paper. We have a garden rail made out of paper, a wicker table and chairs made out of paper, even a pencil made out of paper. From the butterflies to the ball of yarn to the chew toy, everything here Melinda has conceived and made out of various types of paper. The fur on the animals has been cut over and over and over again. The flowers have been folded and spiraled and coiled. The tree bark has been sponge painted, the brick spray painted, and the wisteria folded and twisted and knotted around vines, all made from paper. Strathmore is presenting two exhibitions along with Paperworks. The first one is Wool Gathering, art by Shana Comstam. Shana uses felt to create figures and botanicals and utterly new creations 
out of a fiber. Shana's work feels alive. It feels for the moment that the object is just resting, but any minute its tongue or its lips or its fingertips might move. I'm Shana Kunstam, and I'm originally from Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been in Bethesda for two years now. I absolutely love the area. Needle quilting is one of two techniques um, that I use to build my work. Um, the other is wet felting. Needle felting is actually from the 1970s. It was, um, the needles were made from a uh, poor um, industry and um, they compress the wool together so it mats. So it's really easy to do this in a dry setting and build up. So it's like sculpting with clay, except it's really dry. So my background is actually in painting. I was a fine art painter for 20 something years. I painted um, both canvas for gallery shows. Um, I also painted backdrops for Opryland and Dollywood when I was living in Tennessee. Just thinking today about when you are given a bouquet of flowers. You can just enjoy the flowers. You don't need to know where they were grown. You don't need to know if they came from a greenhouse. You don't need to know the Latin name for those flowers. You don't know how, you don't need to know how to, um, to propagate them yourself. I really want my work to give the viewer a sense of curiosity and allow them to use their imagination. I don't know what these figures are in this space, but they are alive with their own personality. And even though they're not in motion, I get the sense that at any minute they could come alive. Strathmore's Invitational Gallery is a space for emerging and mid-career artists. And today, we're happy to be exhibiting work by Emin Sir Kitkissen. Modulation and Harmony is the title of her show. It's graphical, textured abstraction. A lot of my work um, I use when I do art is more like meditation. Yeah, so you will start with, um, you know, get large breath stroke first, and then you step a little bit farther, and then, you know, I keep going back if I don't feel like it's finished. It's actually really relaxing. I go to the studio and then turn the music on, you know, like get the canvas out, and then it's take a little bit of calculation of, um, you know, it's depending on like how large is your canvas and how you know, big as your brush. It's hard for me to use smaller brush because it won't have the same, like, then, like, nuts. Like, I want it to be, like, when people look at it and they're like, oh, it's, like, right there. Uh, when people look at my art, I want them to feel subtle and also um, look at it in different angles, just like the way you look at people. So it's the same way that you work at, look at art. You work at people different way, different angle. Look closer, you see different things. Look farther, you see different things. But mostly I want my art to be um, dense, a little bit dense and complex, but subtle at the same time, yeah. So those is a lot, a lot of my work will be like that, yeah. Emin's work is large and the contrast is high. The brush strokes are bold. And the play between a canvas that is mostly black and a canvas that is mostly white is very effective. I cannot imagine a better way to reopen the Mansion Galleries than with the inventive creations of these talented artists. As you can imagine, making and presenting art at this time is a particularly challenging enterprise. 
We are so grateful that they continued to work with us and work on their art during the pandemic so that we could present these exhibitions and ask the artists to join us tonight. We are thankful as well for the generous support of our sponsors, Karen Lefkowitz and Al Naiman. With Karen and Al's dedicated contribution, we're able to welcome patrons to the exhibitions at no cost. You know, after nearly 40 years, admission to the Mansion Galleries is still free. Karen and Al are artists themselves and their love of the arts is deeply felt. Please join me in thanking them and welcoming them to share a few words. As a longtime board member and patron, Alan and I are thrilled to be able to support the mansion and this exhibit, and we welcome and invite you to join us as well. I hope you'll also do your part, as Karen and I have, providing resources to make these things happen. Thank you.